What's good, YouTube? This is Boxing Wave, and we are back with another fight breakdown. Um, before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit that bell notification as well so you'll be alerted whenever I drop new content. And also, if you do like the video, hit that like button. Smash that like button for me, okay? Um, so this weekend, Saturday, July 9th at 9 p.m. Eastern on Showtime, uh, Mark Masayo is going to be defending his newly crowned WBC featherweight title against Ray Vargas, all right? Um, and it should be a good fight. I actually think this is the best matchup of the weekend, all right? We have other fights. We have the Derek Jazor against uh, Kubrat Pulev fight that's also happening this Saturday on The Zone, which I already did a breakdown for. So if you haven't seen that and you're interested, uh, please go and check that out, all right? Um, so this fight, good fight here. Um, two undefeated fighters. Uh, you got Ray Vargas that's coming in, who's moved up from 122, uh, took a couple of years off, was very inactive, and now he's moved up to 126, had one fight against Leonardo Baez, which was very recently, uh, won that fight, uh, a clear win for him, and um, he's 31 years old, he's 5'10 in height, he's about 70 inch reach, much taller, very tall for the division, very tall for 122 as well when he was down there. Um, but yeah, he's undefeated, uh, 35 wins, 22 knockouts, all right? And then you have Mark Masayo, who's 27 years old. Uh, he has 24 wins, I believe 16 knockouts, 5'6 uh, in height, obviously much shorter, 68-inch uh, reach, okay? Um, so look, this fight is a good clash of styles. You got Ray Vargas, who's the taller guy good reflexes, all right, um, good technique, uh, good counter puncher, very good mover, and very good at controlling distance, okay, he's not just tall for no reason, he knows how to use it, he knows how to maintain the distance very, very well, um, very slick, okay, um, as far as his, um, his, 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 his resume, no huge wins, all right, no huge names on there, but he's been a solid, he has a solid career up to this point. I've been watching him for, for quite some time, but just doesn't have the real big name on his resume yet. All right. Um, do you have Mark Messiah who recently fought Gary Russell Jr., which is obviously his biggest win and a very good win, but a little bit of controversy in that win because of Gary Russell's uh, injury during the fight. Uh, we knew that this injury occurred before the fight. Okay, Gary did mention it before the fight, and we saw it in the fight. All right, um, with the injured Gary Russell, a lot of people um, criticized Mark Masayo's um, performance in the fight due to the fact that uh, he wasn't able to really dominate in a fashion that I guess people expected him to do so with the injury of Gary Russell. Okay. Um, and then you had a fight before that against Julio Ceja where he was dropped, all right? And he looked very vulnerable in the fight. He did get one of the better knockouts of the year that year. But um, still, he was a lot of, you know, he got a lot of criticism, criticism for that performance, all right? So even though Mark probably fought, you know, a fight or two better than the opponents that uh, Ray fought up to this point, I don't think there's a large gap in between the experience that the two has. You obviously, um, Ray has been in a lot more fights, 35 fights against 22 or 24. Um, uh, I can't remember, is it 22 or 24? Let me check real quick. Uh, yeah, it is, it is, sorry about that. Mark has 24 wins, okay, 24 professional fights. All right, but regardless, I mean, there's not much of a gap there as far as experience all right so yeah going to the stars mark messiah is very explosive very quick all right filipino fighter um one of manny pacquiao's proteges you definitely see the similarities there i mean even though both of these fighters are orthodox fighters um a lot of comparisons to pacquiao there because of his style his movement his explosiveness you know um you see a lot of similarities there you know um, he also moves pretty well. He's very quick on his feet and he has a lot of punch and power between the two. He definitely is the bigger puncher between the two. You see that in his KO 
ratio. All right. And his highlights, if you just look him up, he's more of a KO artist when it comes to, you know, his power in both hands, very explosive. Um, but here's the thing, you know, and as far as the odds, it's pretty close. I think Vargas, I believe Vargas is the very slight, slight favorite to win this fight, even though he's the the challenger here. He's the very slight, um, you know, the uh, favorite to win this fight. Ray Vargas, like I said, is tall and he's rangy and he knows how to use this, but he has great reflex. He's a very, very athletic fighter. He's very quick, too. I think the difference between the two is the punching power. And as I, outside of that, I really wouldn't give Mark any more advantages when it comes to that. All right. Uh, Mark likes to start out fast. He likes to put the pressure on, comes forward. Um, you know, but the thing with Mark is he's a rhythm fighter. OK, um, even his bounce, you know, I think. You can time him based on, and I think I might have said this in the Gary Russell breakdown, he likes to bounce two or three times before engaging. And he does it every single time. I was just doing the film study on him this morning, and I noticed it, you know, with watching the Julio Seah fight and also watching the Gary Russell Jr. fight. I noticed in both fights that he likes to continuously bounce reset you know whether you if he has to reset himself he does the same two or three bounces over and over so you don't know what he's doing all right because he does have a good variation of punches doesn't make that much use of his jab and i think that's one flaw he has um he likes to lead with power shots a lot it's not many setups there but he is a very good counter puncher he is a good counter puncher and again like i said he's very fast OK, so he kind of likes to ambush you, but he likes to bounce two or three times. Then he'll come in, he'll throw the hook to the body and then a the right hand up top. Like he does the same different combinations, but he does the bounce every single time. And if you time him correctly, you might not know exactly what he's doing. But I think the longer you fight him, you start he starts to become predictable. And I think that's what we saw in the Gary Russell Jr. fight. Even though Gary Russell was a, like a bit handicapped in that fight with the injury, as the fight went on, Gary's defense became sharper, you know, especially because he was much more limited. He had to rely more on his defense. And it kind of exposed Mark because for two reasons, it, it showed how predictable he was going to be as far as him stepping in and engaging but it also showed how mark in, in two fights in a row he does have some stamina issues he's very explosive early i thought he was doing very well against gary earlier in the earlier rounds um and even in the later rounds even though he was winning he definitely won the fight i just felt like he was burnt out a little bit you know especially in the uh, Julio Seah fight. You know, Julio was attacking a body well. Julio got dropped in the first round, hurt bad. But after a few rounds, after three or four rounds, Seah started to put the pressure on him, started to, to attack the body, and started taking over until he got knocked out late in the fight in the 10th round. It was a very, very good fight. All right, but Mark, with all of his explosiveness and his power and everything, um, if you take him into deep waters, right, which Ray is probably expected to do, you know, he's not, he has, he can pop, all right, he has pop, but he doesn't have the power that Ray, uh, Mark does, I'm sorry, Mark, and the thing with Ray is that he can box his ass off, and he can be consistent throughout a whole, you know, for a whole 10, 12 rounds, right, so with that being said, Mark is very dangerous early on, um, and he's definitely going to push over it, but he needs he needs to find a way to try to pace himself better so he can fight in a good pace throughout the entire fight. Because this is a guy that, in my, in my opinion, has the better technical ability and, and Ray Vargas. All right. Ray Vargas makes a great use of his jab. And not only that, he's not flat footed. You know, even though Gary Russell overall is probably the better defender because he's good at just slipping shots and weaving shots and moving his head. Um, 
Ray's defense, a lot of it is based on his movement, you know, and knowing when to get in and out. I think one thing with Ray, one flaw with Ray, though, is he likes to turn and step around his opponents. I just personally think that sometimes when he backs himself to the ropes or the corners, I think when he steps to his right and pivots and steps around his opponents, I think sometimes he keeps, or well, most of the time, he keeps his guard down and he depends solely off weaving shots, you know, and I think his chin is totally exposed at times. And I can see Mark throwing a sweeping left hook and catching him on the chin on his way out. So I think with that being said, I think that'll be the shot that could possibly hurt if not drop Ray Vargas or not knock him out. Both guys are good at attacking a body. Both of them are. Um, but I also think it may little be a little bit harder for Mark in this case because he's not going to be fighting a guy that's going to be standing right in front of him and that's going to keep his body totally exposed. You know, I think, um, you know, if he traps Ray at times, I think he can definitely go to the body and hit him with a shot to a body that can possibly drop him. I think the body is what really, what Mark really needs to go for in this fight. And he can definitely go for it, you know, and, and I think you want to slow the guy that's very athletic and, and, and good at moving. You want to slow him and slow him down, make make it so where he doesn't move as much, you know. So I think early on, don't do as much head hunting. Go to the body in the opening rounds, even if you have to give up a few rounds to invest into the body. Go for that. I think that's his best bet. You know, Ray, on the other hand, use that jab. Keep the distance, all right? Um, Ray has a great left hook. And what I mean by that is that I've seen him double, triple, and even quadruple the hook, you know, back to back to back. He has a good hook, a very, very good hook. And he's lethal, again, up top and to the body with that hook. Very lethal hook, all right? Again, not the biggest power. He's not the power punches between the two. But he has enough to pop. And, and, and hurt Mark. We seen Mark get dropped before. We need. We seen Mark vulnerable and getting pressured. You know what I'm saying. So I think he has enough pop. So if he lands the right shot, I think he can definitely. He's definitely at least capable of hurting, if not dropping Mark Masayo. Very intriguing fight because Ray. You know, I was reading an article and I saw that Mark says something about you know. Um, if he doesn't run, you know, I think he's already putting that out there. And a lot of fighters like to say that before fights and, and, and try to get that that mental edge in there. Like, yo, don't run for me. Or it's like a bit built in excuse. Like if you don't if you run for me, if you don't run for me, I win clearly. Well, I don't believe Ray is a runner. You know, I think when you're moving but throwing punches, you're not running. You know what I'm saying? Um, you're actually, you know, Ray, I mean, the thing is with Mark in this fight, everybody he's fought that I've seen him fight, at least most of these guys were right in front of him. Even Gary Russell, who's very slick, but he's very flat footed for the most part. He takes quick half steps or, you know, forward or backwards, you know, to get in and out of range. Whereas Ray Vargas, he moves a lot more, but he's high volume at the same time. You know, he's not a guy that's just not going to be doing like he's a well-conditioned fighter. All right. And I do believe he's also the better defender between the two, even though, like I said, that one issue, I think sometimes I think his chin is up on certain, you know, certain periods where he does get clipped. Um, I do think he needs to move a little bit more while keeping that high guard up. And yes, it's possible that some of those shots are going to get around the guard but you know sometimes you just don't want your chin to be completely exposed neither you know what i'm saying um it's a very good matchup and if you don't have anything going on this saturday definitely tune out the fight i think the derek chisora pool that fight is, is is definitely a watchable fight um but i think this is a better matchup between the two you know what i'm saying because both of these fighters let their hands go and i can see it being exciting I, I can also see it being a, a big controversy if it does go to the cards depending on what you like but i honestly believe that ray vargas is the one that is going to be landing more consistently more efficiently um i think his shots are going to be cleaner 
And I think he's going to be more consistent throughout the whole fight. Um, I think Mark needs to at least hurt or drop Ray, um, or if not, knock him out um, at some point in this fight in order to win on the cards. I don't think he's going to beat Ray on the cards because I think when Mark slows down, Ray is going to be fighting at the same pace. And I'm not saying that Mark can't win on the cards because maybe, you know, this is definitely Ray's step up fight. You know, this is the best fight that he's fought in his career. So Mark can do things that Ray has never seen before, especially with the athlete that um, that uh, Mark is. But I just think overall Ray is just he's no he knows how to use that distance. He knows how to use that. He fights tall and long, you know, and he throws a lot of punches and he's very he's a good counter puncher. And he has a good variation of punches as well. In, in fact, I think he has more than Mark. I just don't think he's as explosive as Mark. You can really go either way. You know, I can see Mark getting a stoppage um, if he catches Ray with the right, right shot. But I can see Ray hurting him too, you know. And I see Ray having a better chance of winning this on points. And this is why I'm rooting for, well, not rooting, you know, I made the best. I'm not particularly rooting for either one of them any more than the other. Um, I, but I do think that Ray is going to win this one on points. Uh, I think some of you might bring up the fact that Ray hasn't really been that active. Uh, he did take two years off. Um, there was an issue with him uh, getting, uh, uh, having like a, a, a minor suspension because of, Traces of clenbuterol, all right, which suspended him moment, you know, um, momentarily, all right. But he hasn't been active for two years, and he did come back and looked good against Bias. And when I watched the fight against uh, against Leonardo Bias, even though he was rusty, he still looked the same as he did two years prior at 122 against Kamita, all right. So with that being said, I know he's not as active. I know that he did test positive before, but if we're basing on their last performances, I'm a little bit more impressed with Ray. All right. Um, so I see Ray winning this. My prediction is Ray is going to win this one on points. I think he might struggle early. I think he might even get hurt at some point in this fight. But if Mark doesn't score a knockdown, or maybe at least, you know, drop him a couple times, or if not, knock him out. I see Ray winning this one on points. All right, so that's my prediction. Uh, I will not be covering any boxing this weekend because I'm going to be celebrating my birthday all weekend, and uh, I'm not going to be doing any live commentary, not for this weekend's fights. All right, but um, do look out for the reviews of the fights. I'm definitely going to review the fights. And, and again, check out this fight. This should be a really, really, really good fight. All right, so that's my prediction. Again, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the thumbs up if you're feeling the uh, video and um, be on the lookout for more breakdowns coming soon. I got more coming soon. Ryan Garcia, Javier Fortuna is coming soon and more. All right, peace.